Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, March 10th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. In our Old Testament reading today, we continue reading from King Hezekiah's collection of Solomon's Proverbs. The wicked flee when no one is pursuing them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When a land is in rebellion, it has many rulers, but with a discerning and knowledgeable person, it endures. A destitute leader who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no food. Those who reject the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law pit themselves against them. The evil do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand everything. Better the poor person who lives with integrity than the rich one who distorts right and wrong. A discerning son keeps the law, but a companion of gluttons humiliates his father. Whoever increases his wealth through excessive interest collects it for one who is kind to the poor. Anyone who turns his ear away from hearing the law, even his prayer is detestable. The one who leads the upright into an evil way will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will inherit what is good. A rich person is wise in his own eyes, but a poor one who has discernment sees through him. When the righteous triumph, there is great rejoicing, but when the wicked come to power, people hide. The one who conceals his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them will find mercy. Happy is the one who is always reverent, but one who hardens his heart falls into trouble. A wicked ruler over a helpless people is like a roaring lion or a charging bear. A leader who lacks understanding is very oppressive, but one who hates dishonest profit prolongs his life. Someone burdened by blood guilt will be a fugitive until death. Let no one help him. The one who lives with integrity will be helped, but the one who distorts right and wrong will suddenly fall. The one who works his land will have plenty of food, but whoever chases fantasies will have his fill of poverty. A faithful person will have many blessings, but one in a hurry to get rich will not go unpunished. It is not good to show partiality, yet even a courageous person may sin for a piece of bread. A greedy one is in a hurry for wealth. He doesn't know that poverty will come to him. One who rebukes a person will later find more favor than one who flatters with his tongue. The one who robs his father or mother and says, that's no sin, is a companion to a person who destroys. A greedy person stirs up conflict, but whoever trusts in the Lord will prosper. The one who trusts in himself is a fool, but one who walks in wisdom will be safe. The one who gives to the poor will not be in need, but one who turns his eyes away will receive many curses. When the wicked come to power, people hide, but when they are destroyed, the righteous flourish. The Christians in Thessalonica were being troubled by people who were saying that the Lord, uh, that, that Jesus' final return had already happened and that they had missed it. In our reading from Paul's second letter to the Christians in Thessalonica today, we're going to hear Paul assure those Christians and us that the Lord has not yet returned. In fact, before the Lord returns, there will be the coming of one whom Paul calls the man of lawlessness. We have also come to know him as the Antichrist. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled 
either by a prophecy or by a message or by a letter supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the apostrophe comes, apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he sits in God's temple, proclaiming that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you about this? And you know what currently restrains him, so that he will be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one now restraining will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth and will bring him to nothing at the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is based on Satan's working with every kind of miracle, both signs and wonders serving the lie, and with every wicked deception among those who are perishing. They perish because they did not accept the love of the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, so that all will be condemned, those who did not believe the truth but delighted in unrighteousness. But we ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel so that you might obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught, whether by what we said or what we wrote. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.